Hello, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Sarab Reddy, Academic Director and CEO of ADR Plexus. Now, quickly discuss the NEET PG 2025 recall questions asked from Anastasia. There are overall total six questions, which are like five are directly related to anesthesia, and one is related to orthopedic surgeries, which we have covered in the workbook. Okay. So, all the questions have been asked and been covered in the workbook. Okay. And from the ADR Plexus question, like five questions are there, like which directly simulates the topics and also there's a few direct topics. So let's see the first question. A 36-year-old male patient undergoing surgery under general anesthesia developed a hypercapnia, tachycardia, sudden onset of muscle rigidity shortly after administering suction alcoholine and sevoflurane. What is the most appropriate treatment to be given immediately? So the clinical features of hypercapnia, tachycardia, and sudden onset of muscle rigidity, and even in the clinical question, they ask about the temperature, they all go in favor of malignant hyperthermia. And the most common drug causing malignant hypothermia yeah. is sectional alcoholine and they ask what is the most appropriate treatment to be given immediately for that. So it is a straightforward and the answer is dantrolene sodium. Dantrolene sodium is the correct answer. So this we have discussed in your workbook like the drugs triggering sectional alcoholine is the most common drug triggering malignant hypothermia and also the drug of choice is dantrolene sodium at 2.5 milligrams per kg IV and we can repeat up to maximum 10 milligrams per kg. Okay, that's the first question. This is very straight, pretty straightforward question. I keep saying there's a question which was asked from malignant hypothermia last year too. And again, they asked this year also. Then coming to, again, if you see from the question bank, this is, this is the screenshots from, this is a screenshot from the workbook and this is the screenshots from the area plexus Q bank where you can see, same with the similar features like hypothermia, muscle rigidity, rapid, rapid rise in ETCO2, all these things based on the drug which is causing. And here we have also discussed about the management component. So this is both, this is a from screenshot from the app and this is from the pulses plexus, like the web app. Then the second question, a young male patient undergoing surgery develops flushing and rashes all over the neck and anterior just immediately after administering muscle relaxant. Which of the following muscle relaxant is mostly responsible? So the answer is a pancuronium, a tracurium, is a tracurium, vacuronium. So here, when there's a little about flushing, rashes all over the neck and anterior chest, in, immediately after administering muscle relaxant, they're asking about what is the drug which is causing histamine release. So no, we know, we broadly classified the muscle relaxants into steroidal group of drugs and Benzyl isoquinoline group of drugs. So oh, none of the steroidal group of drugs has this property of histamine release. So straight away we can rule out vacuronium and pancuronium. Then coming between atracurium and among benzyl isoquinolines like atracurium, cisatracurium, mevacurium, atracurium and cisatracurium doesn't have histamine release, that's why it is favored over atracurium, whereas mevacurium also has a little bit, but it's not much as atracurium. So the answer goes, answer is atracurium. The same thing, if you see in the uh, table, which we have discussed, in, this is a screenshot from the workbook. The maximum, when derivatives release histamine, the maximum is seen with d tubercularin and the absent with is atracurium. Mm -hmm. And you can see this histamine release thing, which we have discussed about. And the same, exactly the same question. A patient undergoing surgery is administered non depolarizing muscle laxant. The anesthesiologist decides to use cisatracurium instead of atracurium. Which of the following is the most significant advantage? And this is the same thing about no histamine release have been covered from the ADR plexus question bank, which you can see in both from the pulses plexus bank and also from the ADR plexus Q bank area. Then, a critically ill COVID patient is on a ventilator with severe EIDs, PF ratio of 100. Which of the following is the best ventilator strategy to manage the patient? This is again a very straightforward question where the ventilator strategy here is in a COVID patient with severe EIDs, we have to give high deep and low tidal volume. This is the lung protective strategy. There's a lung protective strategy which is commonly used. And so here we have to see about low tidal volume and high PP. C is the correct answer. This has been discussed here. High PP and low tidal volume. Exactly this lung protective ventilator strategy has been covered in your workbook when you discuss about the respiratory disorders and other ventilatory strategies. 
the similar questions related to the PEEP and what are the conditions which has to be used and what are the conditions which are contraindicated and all have been uh, covered upon in the aerial plexus keeping campaign. Then, a four years old child presented to ER in an unresponsive state after consuming yeah. peanuts immediately. What is the best step in the management? Endotracheal intubation, back thrust, chest compression, and abdominal thrust. Here, anyhow, like the child who no, is unresponsive state after consuming peanuts immediately. What is the best step? This is an unresponsive state, it is going to be chest compression. This is straightforward. But there are a like few scenarios, few of the questions recollected, they were mentioning about, it is not mentioned about unresponsive. If it is not responsive or not mentioned about unresponsive, then it's going to be the thrust. So here, we have discussed the same thing if we unwitnessed or unwitnessed collapse where we have to go for CPR and then activate the CRS. It has also been covered in the workbook. Again, it depends, the answer depends upon like whether it's been the question, the question they have mentioned about whether collapse, when the patient is clearly unresponsive or if the statement is not mentioned accordingly. As if the unresponsive is mentioned, then the answer is going to be the chest compression as mentioned. Okay, the similar thing, activation without the following situation should activate the emergency response okay. system after performing one cycle of CPR. There is unwitnessed collapse of the child that we already mentioned here. Same thing in the workbook and also in the QBank app. Then following a building collapse, a patient is brought with brought in with an obstructed airway and the mouth packed with concrete deb debris. Vital shows blood pressure of 90 by 60 mm of Hg and heart rate of 105 per minute. The emergency airway procedure shown in the image performed, which of the following statements about the intervention is correct. Here, this image is, you can see this is a needle cricothyroid artery. Needle cricothyroid artery. And here, Let's rule out the options. The options are it allows for removal of large foreign bodies from the airway, which we can't do that. Like it's needle cricothyroidotomy, which is an emergency procedure. So this is gone. And it must be followed by a formal tracheostomy. We always discussed in the class, needle cricothyroidotomy is an emergency procedure and it will be always followed by a formal tracheostomy. Let's rule out the other options. It can be safely used for prolonged airway management without further intervention. So you know, we can you have to immediately switch to the more Definitely management that is in the tracheostomy. So this is wrong. And it provides adequate ventilation for up to six hours, which is unlikely. We, the, the amount of ventilation which is possible is unlikely. So the correct answer it must be followed by a formal tracheostomy. So we discussed tracheostomy, what decrease anatomical dead space, cricothyroidotomy used in airway emergencies only. Because both are definitive airways, but it has to be used in only in airway emergencies. We clearly discussed about this. Then the similar thing, there are two questions which have been asked about mentioning about the trichothyroidotomy points in the question bank, area plexus question bank. And then this sixth question, like though it is slightly related to orthopedics, but when we discussed about anesthesia for special settings, anesthesia for, for some specialties and coexisting diseases, we have discussed this. The patient with a femoral fracture presents 24 hours later with shortness of breath petechial rash and altered mental status. What is the most probable diagnosis? This is a typical triad where they say patient is having dyspnea, altered mental status, and petechial rash. So this goes in favor of fat embolism. So here is the, the femoral fracture. So this we discussed in the workbook when we are discussing about the orthopedic surgeries, the fat embolism right, should be um, should be watchful for fat embolism in long board surgeries. We have highlighted this point and altered mental status, pedicle rash, and this. Thing. So these are the things which have been asked, and this examination is mostly covered upon like the points from the previous year questions, and most importantly, um, though there's been like slight tweaks in the question, but mostly we were able to answer this. So. One thing we are happy is most of you are able to answer the questions correctly because the total, mostly they are related to the previous year questions or like mostly the straightforward questions. So that's all for the questions. If you have any doubts, please feel free to ask that I can answer this. Um, so that's it. All the very best, champs. Okay.
we'll see you after the results thank you i'll be waiting